Hey, this morning, I'm sorry it's a bit dark in here, but it is 6.15 a.m. And uh, pretty dark outside. Anyway, what I have on my bench today is a USA Columbia tabletop model. I'm not sure of the exact model number. <clears throat> I'm not that uh, familiar with too many of the Columbia machines, because usually I'm smart enough to avoid them for issues that I will get to in a moment. Not that they're bad machines. I mean, it's nice. Looks to be mahogany. And, uh, you know, it's a good, this one's in pretty good shape. Somebody was taking care of it. It's clean. It's not all beat up. Some weird stuff on it. Like this, for instance. I'm assuming there should be a cover here, obviously. And it's missing, so we're going to have to try to source that somewhere or just ignore it. And for another thing, this is kind of weird. Somebody painted the horn green. I don't know why. It's obviously it is painted green. You can see the oversplatter on the wood. Columbia didn't do that. They generally left these black. I see it's corroding a little bit in there. But with the proper cover on the front, you won't see that. And I could always repaint that black anyway. The reason I like to avoid these Columbias, and this is not the only one I have. I have another one that's a bit older than this. The one with the louvers in the front. I forget the model on that too. But is this reason. Here's your tone arm, and it goes on the back there, obviously, I took it off. Uh, this is pot metal. Obviously, it wasn't a horrible mix of pot metal because it's not all bubbled and blistered, as you often see pot metal parts in other machines. However, it is swollen to the point where this is locked up solid. The joint here and here completely frozen frozen and I do not know if I will be able to break that loose without destroying the entire tone on that is a possibility they can suddenly let go and crumble when you try I mean I'm gonna croil it and I'm gonna let it sit and I'm gonna play with it but I have not had good experiences with these before which is a shame because it's a nice looking tone arm it's you know it would polish up nice it's nicely uh I'm assuming that's nickel plating could even be chrome I don't know but but that's going to be real fun. And this is one reason I really like to avoid these machines is because of this. Try sourcing one of these somewhere else. Very, very few of them around that actually are free without defects. And this is the reproducer. Just kind of clips onto the uh, end of the tone on there. No isolator gasket. Don't know why, but they never used one. Uh, Columbia USA. This is toward the, the very end of Columbia's activities in the United States. They, the British version in the UK did go on until it merged with HMV and became EMI later on. Mostly for the record label. Though they did continue making the portable record players over there, gramophones, for quite a while. These are a pain in the neck to deal with. They really are. I mean, you have a, a lock, not a lock ring. This is a screwed on ring here. Takes a special spanner to get it off. It's also pot metal prone to sudden destruction <laughs> if you're not careful that ring can crack but a friend of mine found this at a flea market and against my better judgment i told him yeah okay doesn't sound like too bad a price go ahead give it a shot why not now <laughs> obviously this machine hasn't played in a very long time for the tone on to be frozen quite that badly but here's the motor and, of course, there's no lid stay, so I can't really see if I can uh, get a light on this so you can see. This motor is completely frozen. I mean, it does not move at all. None of it. The grease, I'm hoping it's only the dried up grease, of which there is a lot on there, has just frozen it solid. It's a bit more involved than a Victor motor is. Ah, uh, <laughs> It could be that there are some pot metal bushings in there. I've heard mention of that with these before. I don't know if this particular motor or some other Columbia might be the cylinder machines, actually. But in any event, this motor is going to have to be literally unbolted from there, which it would be anyway for service, dunked in a bucket of gasoline and let sit for probably a week or two or however long until it dissolves some of the crud to allow it to be freed up because... I would not want to have to try forcing anything because there's a lot of brass gears on these. See all the brass gears in there? 
You don't want to be trying to force anything on those. You want them to come off freely. That's if I can get the tone arm freed up. I'm not even going to bother with that motor if I can't get the tone arm freed up. There's the horn in there. And they give you a couple of uh, little cups over there. There's the Columbia decal. That's where your reproducer is supposed to sit. There should be a little piece of uh, leather or something like that in there, cotton wadding. But this is going to be what tells if this machine lives or dies because, or not dies, but just isn't fixed by me. I'll sell it for parts because I'm not going to get involved in another tone arm disaster, which I had with the last one. And it took me two and a half years to find a tone arm that actually moved enough that I could shave it down to get it to function. A little sandpaper in there, you shave the, you know, down until it fits properly. Pain in the neck. And I've see, actually seen one much worse than this. Some of them shattered everything else. Columbia's are known, these were known as nice machines. They played well, they had a nice sound. You know, there was nothing wrong with them in that way. Obviously, they were competing with Victor and Edison, and uh, they didn't have access to the Victor patents on a lot of things. Like, you're not going to see sound doors here. You may see louvers. That was Columbia's thing. They had the louvers here. I don't know if this machine had it. Probably did, of some sort. The other one I have definitely does. And uh, little things like the needle cup. I see the reproducer is Columbia's own design. You know, and, and Columbia was a big company. They, they made good, these were all made in-house. They didn't uh, outsource parts. So they weren't what you'd call an off-brand. But the, uh, the company did not survive the 1920s, and uh, not in this country anyway. Probably for reasons, although I don't think it was a pot metal reason. I forget why exactly they folded. Tough economic times, competition for Victor probably, because Victor was the big dog on the block for, for phonographs. I think that uh, the tone arms were fine in the 1920s, 30s, probably into the 40s, 50s. But now, 100 years later, pot metal, yeah. Even if they were stored properly, they're all seized up and, and in bad shape and uh, complicating matters. Still, it's a nice display piece, if I could find that front. Has all the parts except for this. And the wood really isn't beat. Oh, here's the uh, cast iron turntable here. Somebody has at some point replaced that felt. I can tell. It's way too clean. I can tell it back. There is actually a, a number on there. I wonder if that's a date. Let me see. X18. Could that mean 1918? Could be. Who knows? I'll have to do a little more research on that. But like I said, I don't really get involved with Columbia's too often. I don't like dealing with pot metal issues. That's one thing I really don't like getting into because every time I do, it turns into a disaster, endless parts searches, more money than I want to spend, and it's not a Victrola. You know, not that there's anything wrong with Columbia, but I prefer to stick with my favorite brand. Victrola and uh, Victor company products and HMV. I'll branch out to an off-brand now and then You know if I don't think there's too big a disaster involved in it with, like I said with pot metal Like it take Cariola for instance. That was one of the off-brands. It's a little more popular than most Had a wider range of machines in the 1920s But they had pot metal tone arms. They had other parts and when you get involved in that, there's always a disaster waiting right around the corner. It's going to crumble at some point. And there's some things you simply cannot replace. And I, I can't JB weld a reproducer back together, not really, and have it work properly. Or, you know, a tone arm elbow, and it may last a little while for display, but that's the end of it. As, a, as a really a machine to be used. But there you go. There's a look at the project that's on my bench right now, only because a friend of mine found it. And he got me on the phone in a week moment. As I found this Columbia, it told me a price. Well, that sounds awfully cheap. And I didn't ask the important questions. Like, uh, did you check the tone arm? I don't think he'd know what a tone arm is, but uh, he's not a phonograph guy. But uh, see, all right, just, just get it. I'll, I'll take a look at it when it gets up here. Because he's in Florida, not here. And he brought it up a month ago. And... Uh, <laughs> Sure enough, it's biting me on the butt. 
Real good. Frozen motor, frozen tone arm. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure there'll be another one on this one. The Columbia with the green horn.